Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. There is a condition called mitral valve regurgitation. Big doctor words. Sure. Uh, but it's when the mitral valve, which is one of the valves in your heart, doesn't close tightly. And that allows blood to flow backward in your heart. Not a good thing. And the blood, it's going the wrong way. It's backing up instead of going out to the rest of your body. And it's bad enough, it could cause, if it's bad enough, it can cause symptoms like make you tired or short of breath. The good news is it's usually fixable. All right, and we have somebody here who knows how to That's do that. That's right. Here to explain is Dr. Abdallah El Sabah, cardiologist. That's a heart specialist from the Mayo Clinic in Florida. Welcome to Rochester, and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Dr. Sabah, I think you picked the wrong time of year to come to Rochester. It's, all good. it's nice I to have miss you, though. the winners, but... Uh... <laughs> he spent some time here, so he knew what he was in for. Uh, all right, perfect. So uh, tell us about the, these valves in the heart. What do they do? Absolutely. So the valves, the role of the valves is to allow, as you alluded, is to allow blood to go from one direction to the other and then close in the second part of the cardiac cycle to prevent blood from going backwards. And this way, the bloodstream and the circulation maintains a uniform or one-way uh, one direction. And uh, that's important to perfuse the organs of the body. And today, we're going to talk about the mitral valve. Tell exactly. us a little more about that. It's on the left side of the heart. Exactly. So the mitral valve separates the left upper chamber of the heart from the left lower chamber of the heart. So in, then the blood gets drained from the lungs into the left upper chamber of the heart across that mitral valve into the left lower chamber of the heart. And then the left lower chamber of the heart squeezes and the mitral valve closes to prevent it from going backwards to the left upper chamber of the heart and forces it to go forward across the aorta to the rest of the body. And that uh, dr uh, valve can be damaged for lots of reasons? Exactly. So in order to understand what could go wrong with the mitral valve, it's important to understand the anatomy of that mitral valve. So the mitral valve is made of two leaflets, which are basically the, the two seals. They're connected very closely to the left lower chamber and the left upper chamber of the heart. So then you can imagine that anything that could go wrong with the leaflets or with the left upper or left lower chamber of the hearts can then lead to a malfunctioning of that mitral valve and then uh, leads it from uh, leads it to uh, leak backwards. And, and what happens? Does the valve just wear out over time or are there other conditions that can cause it? Definitely. There are multiple, multiple conditions. The most common condition or what we call primary mitral valve regurgitation is the, is the problem in the, um, the leaflets themselves. And it, the most common cause of that is a condition called mitral valve prolapse. Or, uh, it's, it's mostly an inherited condition where the mitral valve leaflets are very redundant. And so it starts from young age, and then it can progressively get worse and worse. What do you mean when you say that they're redundant? So the leaflets themselves, uh, they're, the, the tissue of the leaflets, they're longer than it, what it should be. So then when the leaflets ah. close, um, there's a gap. So they kind of overlap but don't seal correctly. One leaflet overrides the other. Uh -huh. and So, um, so you're that, born that way. It do, it's not technically born that way. People uh, develop it as the mitral valve grows. And, really? Uh, so that's kind of how... It happens. It's not. They're born with the the genetics to develop it, and then uh, it can progressively get worse and worse. The, just the the leaflet tissue itself is prone to that redundancy. If you've had rheumatic fever as a child, can that result in mitral re regurgitation? Absolutely. It's one of the. Uh, it's probably one of the most common causes in the developing countries, if not the most common now. Fortunately, we don't see it that we often in this country anymore. anymore. No. So that, that the the mechanism here is different, where the the leaflets get inflamed. And so they retract, and then that's how they get leak, ah. leaky. So, Is this what, uh, when a doctor uses a stethoscope to listen to my heart, is this what they're listening for? Exactly, the murmur. So the, any th anytime you hear the word murmur, it means that the blood is gushing from one chamber to the other across, um, across a valve. Uh, most commonly. So, and so when you listen with a stethoscope, it should be fairly quiet. You should just hear the lub-dub and not the whoosh. So sometimes we we hear a faint murmur, and we call it a functional murmur. It's common in younger people, and uh, and it's common in anem anemic patients. Um, but anyone who has uh, is prone to cardiac disease, or if, it's, if the murmur is loud, then we have to investigate it further. There anemic, are benign murmurs. Anemic patients, patients who have a low hemoglobin. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Uh, so what do you, how do you make the diagnosis? I mean, obviously, if you hear a murmur, that's a suggestion, but that doesn't tell you exactly what's wrong, does it? No, no, it doesn't. So uh, you obviously, as you mentioned, it starts with a physical examination, and if the suspicion is there, the next step would be to image using echocardiography. 
So it's very important um, uh, to, to, to get that next step where it's an ultrasound test with a probe over the chest and we take pictures of that mitral valve and we use what we call Doppler signals to, to look at the flow of the, the red blood cells inside the heart. And that's doing an echocardiogram, which is a relatively simple test, no radiation, you could diagnose it pretty definitively. Yes, definitely. And uh, if the patient has symptoms, what are those and how bad do they have to be before you decide you need to do something? That's a great question. And in fact, uh, it's one of the major problems that we face with diagnosing and, and treating uh, mitral valve regurgitation because it's important to understand the natural history of, the, of mitral regurgitation. So what happens is that um, the, as the blood is leaking, the, the leak is probably mild and moderate to begin with. And so what ends up happening is that left lower chamber of the heart is now receiving blood from the left upper chamber of the heart and then the leaked blood that went up. So it's receiving extra volume of blood. And in order to cope with that, the left lower chamber of the heart then starts to dilate, dilate, and then the function starts dropping. And then at the end of the spectrum is when the symptoms start. So it's actually, when the symptoms start, there might, be, might have been irreversible damage. It's sometimes mm. too late. So it's very important to that annual checkup with the, uh, with the physicians or, 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 the, or the primary care team. And that's incredibly important because the, it starts with the murmur. And then that's how the close monitoring occurs because we really want to catch it before symptoms start. So symptoms start, there's a shortness of breath mainly, lower uh, extremity swelling, fatigue, um, sometimes atrial fibrillation happens and it's an irregular heart rate. And, and that's mitral regurgitation um, uh, is a, one of the causes or one of the uh, contributors to that. So uh, is of it an abnormal heart rate. An abnormal heart rate. Is it easy to fix? Um, it depends. And how do you <laughs> do that? So right now, we, it depends on the first of The first step is when we make the diagnosis of the mitral regurgitation, we, we, defy the, we divide the diagnosis into two. The first entity or the first mitral valve regurgitation diagnosis is called primary mitral regurgitation. And that's a problem with the leaflet itself. Whereas secondary mitral regurgitation is a problem with the muscle of the heart dilating and pulling apart the mitral valve. So the, the treatment differs between the two. If it's a problem with the leaflets or mitral valve uh, or primary mitral valve regurgitation, what we do now is what we call a heart team approach, meaning that a team of interventional cardiologists, um, echocardiographers, or, and valve specialists, as well as cardiac surgeons, the, th the whole team approaches the patient, and that's a very th that's a uh, it's one thing that we're very proud of here at Mayo Clinic, because uh, the treatment differs. It depends on the patient's comorbidities and status, the anatomy of the valve, and, and the treatment ranges from uh, s simply I mean ranges from a uh, surgery where we can do robotic surgery, we could do uh, through a, a, an incision at the side of the chest or th through an, a sternotomy where we go in the middle of the chest. Sternum uh, right in front, you have to split the chest and go in and fix it. Exactly, that's once, so that's the surgical spectrum and we always, always aim to repair the valve, meaning we leave the, the leaflets intact, but we just, or the surgeon just cuts and and sutures the leaflets in a way where it, they don't have to remove the mitral valve and, and place a prosthetic valve. That has the best outcomes. Now, uh, obviously, it all depends on the anatomy and the amount of calcium, many other considerations that, that are technical, and a lot of times, and sometimes the surgeon has to, has to replace the valve. Um, and then on the other spectrum, if, if the patient is at high risk for surgery, um, we have what we call the mitral clip, where it's a percutaneous device that we go up from the leg and we grasp the leaflets together, and, and that's a minimally invasive under general anesthesia without any incisions. Now, on the other hand, if it's secondary mitral valve regurgitation, the main focus is to treat the left lower chamber of the heart, which includes medications and um, other therapies like uh, devices or pacemakers that, are, uh, that synchronize the heart. Uh, and then, uh, and then if, that, if the leak remains, a lot of times when the heart remodels, the leak, the leak goes away. But if it doesn't, then uh, the next step from a recent trial uh, showed that it, the clip actually is helpful in these patients. And if that doesn't work, you actually have to replace the valve. Is it a mechanical valve or is it a tissue valve? Or do you have both? It's, it's a great question. Um, it depends, obviously, on the patient and the age. Um, and it's because it's on the left side of the heart and it's fairly a, a, a low flow, lower flow than across the aorta, a lot of surgeons are putting in tissue valves now. Um, 
And the second reason is coming that from other humans or cows or where do you get the tissue? It's from the outer layer of the cow or of the heart cow or the uh, of the of the cow's heart or the pig's heart. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so they Rejection a problem? Not a problem, but it's postulated because these these vows last about ten years. Um, sometimes they degenerate earlier. But the good good news is that if that happens in the mitral position, we have a percutaneous option now where we go from the leg and deploy a transcatheter valve inside that failed bioprosthetic valve. No incisions, except no, in the groin. Except wow. in the groin. Wow. Pretty amazing. Well, so, whatever the problem is, you can fix it. I suppose. <laughs> mitral <laughs> regurgitation. It's a problem with one of the heart valves, the mitral valve, which is on the left side of the heart, and the blood flows backwards because the valve doesn't close tightly. The most common symptoms, shortness of breath and fatigue, correct? Correct. And if the leak is bad, is bad enough, you need to have it fixed. And these guys know how to do it in multiple <laughs> different ways. Uh, hopefully repair it, if not, replace it. Our thanks to Dr. Abdullah Al Sabah, interventional cardiologist from the Mayo Clinic in Florida, visiting in Rochester. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much.